this video we'll go over how to set up a mixing problem like this one, where we have two fluids inside a tank and an agitator that rotates to mix them together. You can follow along with this tutorial by downloading the step file linked in the video description below. We'll start off by opening the step file. And if you look through our feature tree, you'll see there's multiple different bodies. I'm going to set the tank to be transparent. You'll see we also have a body that represents the volume of water. I'm also going to set that to be transparent. And finally, we have a body sized as a rotating region. This is placed around our agitator. We'll set that to also be transparent. I'll change my scene color to plain white. Now to get started creating our flow simulation project, we'll go to our wizard. Oh, we need to save our file. And we'll go to our wizard, give the study a name, and we'll choose US units, but I'm going to change down here under loads and motion to change the angular velocity to RPM. For physical effects, we're going to want to enable gravity and set that in our global minus y direction. We'll enable rotation to support our rotating agitator, agitator. And we'll set our type to sliding, which is the most accurate uh, general purpose rotation method we have in flow simulation. But when we do this, it warns us that it'll make the analysis time dependent. So it also enabled this checkbox for us we can go up and set our total analysis time to the period we want, which is five seconds. This is going to be an internal analysis. We want to uncheck exclude cavities without conditions because the rotating agitator is what's going to cause all the flow here. We'll click next and we want to choose our liquid. Now we're going to choose water and for our second liquid you could choose one of these other ones here, but if you just wanted to see the mixing behavior, like as if we had uh, some food dye or food coloring inside the tank, then what we could do is go to our engineering database by clicking the new button. And what I've done here is I just went and took my predefined water and copied it and then pasted it into my user defined liquids library and renamed it to uh, dyed. So, or it could be water too, just any other definition of the liquid. So with this, I can load in both of them. I can go down here to my user defined, load in that dyed water, and they'll both be here as my default fluids. Then when I get to the last screen, I need to pay attention to concentrations. And I want the tank to be initialized to just 100% of the regular water. It's important to consider when we're setting this up, we're making an assumption that the tank is completely full and there's no airspace at the top. So when we click finish, it'll create my flow simulation project. The computational domain will be sized incorrectly at first. This is because of these other bodies that we have here. So what we'll probably want to do is go into our input data folder, right click and enable component control where we will disable these other components, such as the water volume and the rotating region. Then if I go into my computational domain, edit it and click reset, we'll see that it snaps to the size of the tank as expected. We'll specify the rotating region and choose the rotating region component from our tree and set our angular velocity of 120 RPM. Also, we want to initialize, based on this water body here, this to be a different fluid. So the way we do that is with an initial condition from our conditions pull down menu. We'll choose the water volume. You could also disable the solid component here if you hadn't already. And we'll set this to be 100% of our dyed water. Really, we're just using this as a separate fluid definition so we can track the mixing. 
we'll leave all the other initial settings to be the same. Now it'd be useful to have some goals to track our parameters of interest. So I'm going to insert a surface goal, select the agitator body, and track the torque in the y direction on the agitator. Let's hide our computational domain to clean up our display. And let's edit our mesh settings by editing the global mesh. And I'm going to turn my mesh level up to level 5. Finally, I want to adjust something about the results saving. So I'm going to right click on my input data folder, go to calculation control options, and adjust the saving tab where I'll enable the Transient Explorer. I'll click the three dots here to control what's saved by the Transient Explorer, and I'm going to uncheck the velocity components and enable the volume fraction of our dyed water. Finally, we can click Run to run the analysis. So as this is a transient analysis, it's going to take some time to solve. I believe it takes about 10 minutes to solve on this computer. So we'll fast forward through to when the results are available and continue with interpreting them. Now that the solve is complete, we can go to our results processing. If I open my results folder, you can see right now in a transient study, we're at time equals five seconds. So when I insert cut plots and things like this, I'll be expecting to see the values for five seconds of time. So let's insert cut plots and we'll plot contours of the mass fraction of water dyed. So we can see a pretty even mix here by the end of our solution. If we were to right click and load a time moment and go to the beginning of the solution at zero seconds, we'd see this division where we had initialized the fluid to the lower section. Let's also insert a surface plot onto our agitator and we'll plot pressure on the agitator. This is just a way for us to visualize the agitator while it will be rotating. And finally, this load time moment functionality exists only for specific moments of time that we saved. We could specify a saving period for it if we wanted to, but we can also use that transient explorer that we enabled. If I activate that, and uh, let's check my cut plot. I might have saved the wrong parameter. So the um, we only have access to a subset of parameters within the Transient Explorer. So you can see it was actually volume fraction of water that I wanted to be using because that's what I had enabled in it. So once I enable that, the Transient Explorer gives us this playback bar where we can quickly play back through the analysis. Now. In order for this display to look better, we'll want to hide the original body of the agitator. And now when we play, we see the motion occurring from that surface plot. You can also increase the number of levels of our contours. And I'd recommend for a cleaner display to fix the minimum and maximum values here for the volume fraction. So I'll adjust this range to go from zero to one. You could do the same thing for the pressure using an intelligent range. Then we'll see a more uniform display. So it appears we're getting a pretty complete mix after just about two and a half seconds. We could always probe the locations to see um, the extremes that are occurring at the top and bottom of the tank here. Now to get out our torque, we'll insert a goal plot. And I'll choose to plot this against physical time. So when I go to my goal history, since this is a transient study, we need to kind of pick out the steady state value, which seems to be around here. So around 100 pound feet of torque. Hopefully you found this setup process helpful. It's a bit of a more advanced analysis incorporating a transient study and rotation. 
If you want to learn more about using SOLIDWORKS flow simulation for industrial equipment applications, you can check out the webinar linked in the description below. And let us know in the comments what type of content you'd like to see next.